Right, hello all. I hope you're all doing very, very well today. As you can tell, it is Historical Friday. Right, and in today's video, we're going to be having a look, unboxing and review of... <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. The Warlord Games Black Powder British Union Brigade Cavalry. And here you get 12 figures. One, two, three... Yeah, 12 figures. We'll be having a look through at the look of the sprues and what you get and just have a look really. Um, so we're going to have a look at that and we're also going to be having a look at this. Now this is the Vallejo British Infantry Napoleonic Wars paint set. Now I knew you could get the Waffen SS and different paint sets for other things but I didn't know you could get these. So I picked these up as well um, a few weeks ago. Not used them yet, so we'll be having a quick look through there and what paints you get in the paint guide, which is really quite good as I'm looking on the back. So we'll have a look and I'll go on the car because the table is just full of stuff again, but never mind. Um, right, let's have a look at this and this. So, see you in a minute. Right, hello all, let's move out of the way. Here we have the British Union Brigade Cavalry, 12 multi-part plastic and metal 28mm British Cavalry models. Now this is for Napoleonic Wars, for the British Cavalry, and really nice boxer again. Um, right, I'll just get, try and get rid of that. There you go, a little bit of a shine on the box from the light from the camera, right. Now, in this box, you get 12 plastic British Union Brigade Heavy Cavalry, and you get two Metal Command miniatures, which is the Officer and the Trumpeteer, you can just see there. And you can paint them probably one of three three ways, really. You've got the Scots Greys, just there. You've got the says Dragoon and Sporting Peninsula Campaign Bicorn, which is the actual actor there. And you got the officer for the 1st Royal Regiment of Dragoons. I'll probably go for, because I'm not very good at painting grey, almost to the white. I shall go with the 1st Royal Regiment of Dra Dragoons. So let's have a look. And so I can get everything out. Empty box stands. You can see all printed wall of games. <coughs> you can get single horses on these. So just your standard stands. You get obviously one, two on there, two on there, two on there, and so forth. So yeah. Simple. You've got a piece of paper which Gives a little bit of history about the British Union Brigade Cavalry and what happened. And I read this the other day, and it's actually quite interesting. The um, they charged through the French lines because as the French were marching towards them, the French infantry um, they were marching in lines. The British cannons cut them down quite a fair bit, but they just kept coming. And it looked as if the French were going to win. But. This is a, da, 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 and in just a few minutes the great French columns had disappeared. And the well known failure of control kicked in. All three cavalry regiments. The British cavalry had a fearsome reputation as fighters. But less so in discipline. <coughs> With no. <coughs> excuse me. With no supports left behind them to rally on. They careered at patrol, slashing at everything in their path, through batteries of foot artillery and cutting it all before them. Then came retribution. The French lancers and the couriers hit them in a well-placed kind of attack and took their revenge. So incensed were the French that the British cavalry suffered more deaths than wounded as the lancers struck their stricken victims on the ground repeatedly, taking few prisoners. So they charged, done well, but then retribution by the French. So, but yes, and that's the front. And still a little bit on the back as well about um, the box covers the inf uniforms of all f three regiments of the Union Brigade. So you get Scots Greys, a bugler on dark horse, a dragoon 
guard in watering cap, which is the thin cap there, and you've got the bicorn. Dragoon guard wearing peninsula campaign period of bicorn, which is that. So yeah, so unsure what to do, but that's just a little bit of info about that. Um, all th you get one, two, three, four, six sprues, and all six are the same as you can see. So what we'll do, push all into one side and have a look at one sprue. It's that simple. Cause no point going through all six. Let's have a look at the right, this way. Get it right, Justin. So let's have a look. You can see the D's hell. We'll just go through the horses first, then we'll look at the um, the riders. Really nice detail on the horses. You can see the saddles and stuff, and the knapsacks, the reins. You can see the detail on the on the horse as well. The face, really well sculpted as well. This bit, you just see in between reins. Unsure we're worth to dig that out, but then if I do that, then that might be too thin. But two different poses for the horses per sprue, you know, really well detailed. And you get the other side of the horse, the detail is really, really nice on them. So that's the horses. Uh, let's go with right, two different riders and all different heads. There you go, folks. Nice, well detailed as well on the front. Hmm, I like that. Really nice details. Back, we've got the heads. Let's have a look. Now that's the that cap I was telling you about. Really nice detail as well with the faces. Now I do like this this head there, the helmet head there. And the other heads, all the top, go for these four first. And that's quite nice, the bicorn helmet for the Peninsula campaign. And you get those hats. Yeah, really, really nice. And they're quite nice, them ones. But yeah, that's the sprue. So we'll have a look at the... And this is the metal sprue. I'm going to tip it all out on the floor. Thank you very much, Ronnie S, for packing. Um, one head's come off. That's one head. You just see, you try and hold it without losing the detail. A little bit of flashing on the front of his face, but that's not an issue. Nice detail, and you can't see because of the lighting, but yeah, really nice detail on that. The moulding looks quite nice. A few little bits of flash, but and then you got a full rider, a little bit of flash on the ends there, as you can see. Yeah, really, really nice. Well sculpted. No, it's a bit, little bits of flash under the arms and stuff, but hmm, yeah, that's one, and then you obviously got another one. Yeah, this is the officer, and then you get obviously where that gap is there is where the other head should be. You got different heads for the difference so you can have. Scots Greys, um, Dragoons, or the um, Peninsula, Peninsula Campaign. Yeah, really, really well detailed. Well, that's the um, that's the uh, 
thingy kit. That's the cavalry. Really nice kit. Really cheap. I got it from Goblin Gaming, and, and um, I can't think how much it was now. That was um, twenty percent off the normal retail price. Well, that's that. We shall have a look at this. Move this out of the way. And this is the paint set for British Infantry, which I've actually got a box of the British Infantry up on my desk. So you get the paints, you get the numbers at the front, the eight paints. Sorry, I'll just try and get that from there. You go, the glare out of the way. These are the numbers of the paints you get. So the British Line Infantry figures between the years of 1789 and 1815. <clears throat> and on the back, it tells you there. I'll just hold it still so you can read it. The different colours represent what you can paint. Now this is a really good thing because I always struggled with what things were called and stuff, yeah? So that colour would be for your haversack, which is that bit. Um, and the buff facing. You got the London grey, which is the colour for the trousers and the great coats. Um, you got the jackets, obviously, but a lot of people said don't use flat red because it doesn't look quite right. You got the dark Prussian blue for your facings as well, just there, the little collars, uh, the cuffs. German dark green for your facings as well. <clears throat> Oily steel for your musket barrel. Um, the belt is off white. And brass for the charco plate, so which is just the front. But what we'll do is we'll just have a quick open up of the box, and this I've looked at already. Are all the paints you can get for Vallejo? As you can see, these are all the model colours. Okay. And then you get your products at the very bottom, like Flow Improver, Airbrush Stino and stuff. And on the back is the Model Air. So that's literally all that. I won't go through every single one, because it's just literally just hundreds on there. I'll have a look at the paints. They're in the dropper bottle style. Okay, so... I'm starting using the dropper bottle style of... of tub because I think they're fantastic but with these you need a really good shake that's what I've been told so as all paints give them a damn good shake you get all your paints in there look eight there all your colours so that's that there's not really a lot to, to look at in there but a good idea if you're getting into Napoleonics and you're unsure about the paints Get this set this is all available on the goblin game website and obviously Vallejo is a Spanish company but it tells you there as well just a little bit in English about this is the red coated soldiers of British infantry formed the only force available to withstand the might of the French army of the, the Napoleonic Wars fighting from Portugal through to Belgium the British army and her allies finally brought the might of Napoleon's France to its end at the battle battle of Waterloo so, yeah, Black Powder, Wall of Games. You can get a little picture of what the figure would eventually look like. So, but yeah, that's the kit. Really, really nice. And like I said, if you're getting into, into Napoleonic and you're unsure of the colours, get this. So, that's the unboxing. That's the review of that. And that. Hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, please. Thank you very much for watching. I've been the BMP and you've been great. Bye.